Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome to just a really quick kind of complaining <laughs> episode, I guess, um, or just kind of a quick update, because the new, a new update for Dungeons, Dragons, and Space Shuttles came out today, and as you guys know, I, especially whenever I first started this pack, I absolutely love this pack, you know, it's, it's got that, it had, it had that balance between, um, you know, exploration and combat and crafting and tech and magic that I like a lot. Um, but I'm finding that, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to stop playing the pack, but I'm finding that as time progresses, progresses, there's like a, a power creep within this mod pack <laughs> in the updates, which is absolutely worrying to me because it started out as a very unique kind of on its own sort of pack and it's becoming steadily i don't think it's intended to be this way but it's steadily becoming like one of those sky factory type just crazy resources from everywhere type pack and there's something new that's added of course this pack actually of course this pack has magical crop mystical agriculture uh which normally i'm not a fan of mystical agriculture project a stuff like that i'm not a fan of because it's like just getting resources from nothing um but this pack actually i'm not as bothered buy the mystical agriculture stuff and that's mainly because the the seed duplication is turned off i still kind of wish the seeds were a little bit more expensive because right now they're cheap and of course this is all just my personal opinion um i know people may vary on this but for example like copper seeds um i mean that's cheap it would be a little bit nicer if it was like blocks of copper that would make a little bit more sense um that way you kind of have a longer period before you actually see any return on the seeds because right now um you know a couple harvests and it's already it's already returning you know, it's more than its investment was. Um, but overall, I like the mystical agriculture in this pack because the seed duplication is turned off. Well, up to a certain point. Later on, you can do it again. <laughs> Which is, strangely enough, it's about the time when you get to the hard seeds. Um, you can actually start duplicating them, which is kind of regrettable. But, anyways, um, that's not the point of this and the point of this video. But, there was an update that just came out. And I just kind of dropped my head and just shook it whenever I saw it. And I was like, oh my god, this is going to be bad. <laughs> and at least from my, my perspective. You know, everybody's not going to share my opinion. But um, <laughs> I just wanted to talk about this for a second. Just to bring it to your attention. And show how really OP this really is. So, anyways, there was an update that added... Um, well, it added some new mods. And one of them is... It did add Xnet, which is cool. Xnet's in the pack now. Um, so there's another option for item transfer, which Xnet is super powerful. You know, um, what our nodes can't cover, Xnet can cover. So, I mean, that's that's kind of cool. I love Xnet. It's a great mod. But strangely enough, Torchmaster was added to the pack. And I looked at the configs and stuff, um, because this one, of course, it can extinguish itself. And, I mean, it's crazy cheap. I mean, this is like day one craft for the Mega Torch, which, of course, does, I don't know, it's like a... Eight, eight chunk radius or something you know it's like a massive area where mobs just cannot spawn um which is fine if either of two conditions is true that's either a it's gated to where it's expensive i mean this is cheap this is day one go mining for a little bit and you got mega torch um or if the the unlit thing is turned off which i absolutely hate that i'd much rather see just a gated mega torch um, but actually, in this pack, it's turned off, so it doesn't ever go out. You just put it down, and psh, there you go. You have a massive area where mobs just cannot spawn, ever. And it takes no resources or anything like that. And it's a day one craft. Um, so realistically, you could just go around and just stick these around and just have no mobs. Um, and it's strange that that was added, because there's ways to do that within the pack, aside from the Mega Torch. And... They're a little bit more balanced, a little bit more gated, and then the Mega Torch was thrown in just to basically <laughs> bypass any need for those things. Um, personally, I'm not going to craft this. I don't like this addition for it being as cheap as it is. Um, but, you know, I mean, there's ways through, like, Blood Magic and Astro Sorcery and stuff to prevent mobs from spawning, you know, if you don't want to light everything up. But, um, but yeah, so the Torch Master was added, which actually kind of... I had a lot of fun at the beginning having to build my wall and, like, protect it. But now I can just make, like, four Mega Torches and stick them out. And I don't have any mobs, even during Blood Moons and stuff. So I thought that was a little bit... <laughs> a little bit of a, I don't know, a weird change for the pack. Because the, I'm looking at it from the perspective, like, this... Originally, it wasn't, like, a, a Project Ozone-type, just crazy lots of mods and 
uh, <laughs> just the power creep that is that is uh, it, within those packs. But it's steadily moving. It's steadily shifting towards that, which is worrisome. The other big change I noticed. I mean, there was a lot of mod updates and little things like that. But the biggest change I noticed, and this was the one that just made me just shake my hand, just, oh my gosh, without even having started the pack yet. And then, yeah, as soon as I got in the pack, it was as bad as I I had thought it would be. It was worrisome as I thought it would be. But the loot bags were totally redone. Um, which, honestly, I kind of thought they were okay as they were because you open up a loot bag and it wasn't anything. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, like occasionally I'd get, you know, some ingots or something that I could actually benefit from. Um, but it wasn't anything super crazy. It was just kind of like an added, like, oh, yay. And it'll actually prove really, really nice whenever we start getting into chemistry within the mod pack. But <laughs> this rework is, it's rough. Um, honestly, to the point that in, in my pack, I'm not going to open loot bags. I'm just going to start trashing them because it's getting to where, because with this update, it's, it's kind of that issue that a lot of mod packs have where you just basically circumvent any need to do any progression um, or a lot of progression by just setting up a loot bag farm and you're done. And that's that's a that's a big problem. That's why I don't generally like loot bags and loot boxes and all that stuff. But for example, um, the common ones you can see, like I got mineral wood, stone AIOT, gunpowder, leather, butter, potato. You can see there's a lot more items. And I notice this is pretty consistent with these first three tiers. You get a lot of stuff out of these. Um, there's clay plates. Um, then we've got sugar clay, dark oak. I mean, it's nothing out of the common loot bag. It's nothing crazy OP. There's throwing torches, uh, which actually will complete a quest. So you don't have to do it. There's slime balls, gold nuggets. I mean, you can see these are, these are pretty consistent. They're not really all that great. Um, copper chest plate. That's kind of nice. Uh, if you get lucky on that, of course, I hate, I'm, there was sandy coal compound, which is pretty good, but I'm not a big fan of just basing things off RNG because, you know, I... <laughs> I know Project Ozone 2 had that issue. Of course, I wasn't a huge fan. Um, Electrum chest plate, really, out of a common loot bag? That's kind of <laughs> kind of crazy. But, um, you know, because all the rewards were RNG, and I don't like that. It's not tailored to, like, any kind of balance. It's just kind of like, what is RNG going to give you? And there was, like, you know, you'd pull out, like, in-game weapons, like, day one, which is just nuts, right? Um, but anyways, I mean, there's nothing too crazy coming out of this. It's nothing, like, shock and awe. Moving on to the Uncommon Loot Bag, there's Knockback 2, Ancient Tome, there's Refined Obsidian Plates, that's actually kind of a, a nice find. Uh, most of these that I opened, um, they were okay. Um, maybe a little bit crazy for Uncommon, I mean there's 3 Mana Steel, some Luminescence, Iron Legs, which are, of course they're gated within this pack, there's a Leech 1 Iron Axe. Some of these they do get a little bit out there i mean that's that's not bad i still don't like seeing that because it's circ once again that circumvents uh progression because you don't uh necessarily have to get your pallies and stuff through actually progressing up to it you can just kind of yeah see there's emer uh, emeritic and mana quartz you can get lucky on loot bags so um but anyways yeah there's uh, I mean, it's it's overall I think it's fairly balanced but I mean there's still some things that are kind of worrisome uh, the rare loot bags are kind of the same thing they're not super OP um, you're going to start seeing some diamond stuff uh, Restonia crystal block once again kind of able to circumvent some progression there there's steel iron boots but uh, once again I mean I think it's pretty consistent with uh, the way the, the loot's going right for the rare loot bags it's nothing like jaw dropping. Oh my gosh. Okay, then we get to the back half of this. Okay, that's not that crazy. Out of the epic loot bag, it's not that crazy. Um, lava bucket and scandium. Let's see. Nothing good. <laughs> nothing good out of that one. Um, carbon. Powered steel rails. These are <laughs> these are actually worse, I think, than the rare ones at this point. Um, <laughs> I was able to get a couple earlier whenever I was messing around with it. Uh, but it wasn't anything too crazy from what I saw. But it's about to get pretty bad. Oh, I accidentally just broke that. <laughs> That's okay, I was done with that one. But nothing, no, there wasn't anything too, too crazy. I mean, there was a couple OP rewards in there, but uh, nothing too crazy. But these last two, these last two here, like Legend, oh, there we go. Terra Steel and an Intermedium Furnace. That's pretty nuts, right? Um, and it's going to get, it's a little bit crazier whenever I show you how really easy these loot bags are because, 
Um, things aren't disabled within the pack to kind of balance them, and they're actually crazy cheap to get. Uh, there's methane, 16, uh, basically 16 buckets of methane gas, that's a little bit much. Uh, there's molten iridium, um, but I mean, you can pull Terra Steel out of these. There's a basic energy cube, compressed diamond, that's white magic essence stuff. There's more iridium, uh, insanium essence, and intermediate apple. <laughs> these are pretty crazy. Tier 4 crafting seed. That one's actually not that good. <laughs> we finally got one that, that's kind of like that. Most of the other ones are like, what? Terra Steel, Supremium, Molten Iridium. There's Tier 3 crafting, Majestic Dust. This is something, um, this is something I do not like at all. Um, originally these came from, um, like the Majestic Dust and the Majestic Ingots. The, the Majestic Dust you could craft, which actually I think one of these were not craftable. It can only come from a dungeon and I think it was the Ingot. I seem, uh, maybe, but originally these were, um, okay. Yeah. See, used to, this said, uh, can be found in dungeons um, for both of these, and then there was like one of them that could be crafted, but now they're both craftable, and they both come from this loot bag, the yellow one. So you can actually pull out um, your majestic ingots and your majestic dust from the loot bags, um, which apparently now it's craftable too, so um, I kind of liked it when it was exploration based because it kind of actually forced you to get out of your base and not just stand in the base and press buttons uh, for most of the time, but... Um, <laughs> There you go. Uh, it, it These rewards, they're starting to get kind of crazy. But then we move into these, the artifact loot bags, okay? And to me, this is where things kind of get... Uh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. But it doesn't matter because we're not going to be really sitting here and opening these. But um, this is where things get a little bit wonky, in my opinion. Because, like, if we hit you and we look at what all can come out of this, um, there's some pretty crazy stuff. Okay, Ultimate Energy Cube, that's kind of nuts. Um, you've got full blocks of Empowered. You've got Sunshine of Eternity and Mining Pick. You've got Ultimate Control Circuits, um, which a lot of these, I mean, these are some crazy things. Like, for example, the Hanzo, uh, the Hattori Hanzo. It's got Portly Gentleman, Brown Magic, Blind Bandit, Sharp, and Emerald. It's full Wyvern. <laughs> and so, of course, you'd, you'd probably change out a few pieces, but starting out with full Wyvern as a baseline... It's pretty powerful, and that is actually really, really common. You can see the drop chance out of the bag is 15.75%, okay? Um, it's very, very common. Very, very, very common. Um, and Portly Gentleman is the one that allows you to pick up mobs and move them with your weapon. Brown Magic is the one that lets you set portals and teleport freely with it. And Blind Bandit's the one that summons that ad that just kills, like, everything. Very, very powerful ad. Uh, you can also get like Enderium coins, which um, that's actually kind of kind of a loss if you if you just get that, for example. Um, but there's like a laser gun. There's the Boom Chicka Wow Pow or Wow Pow. Um, not that one's not as crazy, um, but it does make for a good baseline. Um, but you get, I mean, your heavy duty plates tier four and tier five from this. Um, this thing's pretty crazy because it's almost an unbreakable. Um, shuriken. You get Wyvern Flux Capacitor, Bow of the Wyvern, you get blocks of Insanium Majestic Blocks, uh, two Supremium Furnaces at a time, uh, 64 Super Glue Cells. I mean, there's some pretty crazy stuff. Blocks of Terra Steel. I mean, realistically, you could, if you get Block of Terra Steel and a Block of Insanium Essence um, from this, I mean, they're only a 1.57% chance. But it's actually not that bad whenever you see what I'm about to show you. Uh, you could just straight out craft your Terra Steel, you know, uh, your seeds. Because, once again, they're not terribly expensive. They are a little bit altered. Um, but not enough to where they're actually all that expensive. So you can see one, one block of that. I mean, you can pretty much craft that out. They're not duplicatable until you get to Phytogenic Insulator. Um... This does take like Insanium and Terra Steel, so it's a little bit involved, but um, it's actually not that expensive. Yeah, these these high tier loot bags I think are just over the top, over the top. And so I'm probably just going to uh, not those, but you know the other ones. 
Um, that's why I'm probably, like I said, I'm probably just going to boycott the <laughs> the loot bags in my my series because it's getting the power creep is just getting it's getting out there. And here's where things get really really crazy. Okay, um, the loot recycler and the bag storage. These are both fairly early game. You can craft these with just like basically just starting into uh, mechanism. You can get these. They're not very expensive. Um, and of course, these are used like we used them in Sky Factory alongside chickens to pretty much run our entire base off just loot bags and chicken. Um, <laughs> but okay, if you were to set up like a Steve's Carts farm, just to give you some some idea here, you set up a Steve's Carts farm and you get a manufactory, you get four sticks per plank, and then you get four planks, or not four planks, you get six planks per wood uh, if you run it through the manufactory. So you're talking about 24 sticks per piece of wood. And then you run that through the loot recycler. Each stack of sticks gives you four common loot bags. Very, very powerful. There's other there's other things that you could do. Like, for example, um, Inferium Essence gives you eight common loot bags. So if you got a big Inferium farm, um, you can do it that way. Um, what does a stack of Insanium give? 23. It's really not worth it at all. Uh, but for example, I mean, you can, and especially if you couple this, if you do like a Steve's Carts farm that's collecting lots of wood and just turning it into planks and then recycling it uh, for loot bags, you're going to get a lot of loot bags very, very, very quickly. Especially with how fast the manufacturer runs and how just how much wood a Steve's Carts farm actually produces. You know, it's massive. And then you take those and you just dump them right into this. And of course, this all works with automation you're going to get the 2048 needed for an artifact loot bag without a whole lot of effort. Not to mention if you have a mob farm and you're pulling uncommon loot bags out of that, that's four um, loot bag points, let's say. <laughs> four loot bag points per uncommon loot bag. There's 16, there's 64, and there's 512. Um, now the artifact loot bags are the only ones that cannot be dropped from mobs. Uh, so you can see the drop chances here. Um, but like the commons and uncommons, they're fairly common. You know, we, we actually come across those quite a bit. Just killing mobs. And imagine a mob farm. Um, and then even crazier if you're doing the sticks to the loot recycler. Even if you're just pulling out common loot bags. You know, I mean, you could run a lot of your stuff, your metals and electrotain and stuff, just off the chance coming out of these. Uh, you know, with how fast you could actually produce them. So 2048 at that point doesn't really come out to be that much. It's actually not that much in terms of wood. Um, it's like, I did the math earlier, it's only like 1,300 wood that you need, which is, I mean, I've had Steve Cart's farms that would get 1,300 wood just going around one cycle, you know. Um, <laughs> so, depending on if you just want to scale up your Steve's Cart's farm, or whatever type of wood production, you know, if you're doing bonsais, and you get up to the hopping bonsais, they're a little bit more expensive in this pack, which I think is good, because they're kind of really OP otherwise. Um, but, I mean, you could you could be producing, you could be chunking out artifact loot bags and uh, legendary loot bags like nobody's business. I mean, legendary loot bags are crazy cheap, uh, and they have a lot of really good stuff that comes out of them. So, I mean, really, you could bypass, if you opt to use loot bags, you could bypass, there's bypassing needing to explore uh, Majestic Ingots and the uh, Majestic Dust. So, I mean, the chance isn't super high, but I've seen quite a bit of these come out of there. Um, you're also going to get your furnaces, and um, you can get a lot of your resources. You're also going to get Insanium Essence, 0.49%, uh, but just opening a few of them earlier, I got two batches of that, you know, because you get quite a few things a lot of times out of that. So, Like I said, people are going to differ on their opinions, um, so you guys may not agree with me, but I'm not a big fan of this or the Torchmaster edition. I feel like, I feel like at least the way I saw the pack, um, whenever I first started the pack that made me really excited about the pack because it was kind of combat and, you know, oh man, I got to protect my base because there's mobs and, um, you know, knights, is da knights are dangerous and there's blood moons and you have to explore to get some of your in-game crafting materials, which to me is a big thing. Um, but I feel like all that's just kind of gone, especially with just this update. You know, this, this update here pretty much killed all the combat and... <laughs> All the combat and exploration need um, 
in one fell swoop. Just Torchmaster and loot bag changes, and now all that's just obsolete. Um, if you choose to use those things, personally, like I said, I'm going to I'm going to pretend like Torchmaster and loot bags don't exist in my playthrough. I'm not going to touch them. I tend to do that for a lot of things. If things are just OP, I tend to just ignore them and not mess with them. Uh, that's like I get comments all the time about battle signs from Tinker's Constructs. I don't use them because of that very reason. For me, at least, I have to pretend like certain things don't exist within the pack because I'm just going to kind of like close my eyes and pretend they're not there. So, uh, But if you if you choose to do that, uh, you can get lots of really great things in no time, especially if you're on a server. If you're on a server, it's going to, I mean, you a little bit of setup and you could have just loot bags like crazy. But anyways, that was kind of my rant for today. Uh, I think I've ranted enough. That's kind of my soapbox. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, like, I, like I said, I know it's something a little bit different, but it was something, as soon as I saw that those update, uh, the patch notes, I was like, no, what's going on? Because it was like, for me, what made the pack really cool and different is, is kind of the power creep is killing it away to where it's non-existent anymore. But... Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's my takeaway. I'd much rather say, instead of loot back changes, I'd like to see things like, for example, Blood Magic is barely modified. I mean, we're pretty much, in with no effort whatsoever, we got nodes, which is pretty much like end-all, be-all item transfer for most, most things. Um, the only things that are modified tend to be things that we don't even really care too much about, like the Incense Altar and like the blood letters pack and uh and stuff i mean this stuff is nice early blood magic but you can you can pretty much pass that stuff pr without a whole lot of effort honestly so because i haven't really seen much outside of just the machines the main well just the main machines really i mean the demon crucible demon pylon and demon crystallize are all standard very, very powerful to be as unmodified as it actually is. It's basically early game to unlock everything for the most part. But um, anyways, anyways, that's my rant for today. Um, um, I hope to see you guys next time. Tomorrow there is an actual episode. Today was kind of my, my rant because I woke up and I saw that and I was like, no. <laughs> it was like a sadness moment. But then I was like, well, I can just ignore it and pretend like it's not there. But I still wanted to, to make a quick video and just express my concerns about the changes. But. Um, anyways, I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, I'll see you guys then.